what's going on happy solar eclipse monday i'm here with the the solar eclipse himself i don't know what that means grant cone what's up how you doing is there a solar eclipse today there is so it starts at 10 15 ends at 12 15 in california the best views around 11 15 but don't look at it unless you have solar glasses because you could really True. jack your eyes you'll up. die yeah you, you could you'll die possibly die on the spot yeah that's what happens i read that <laughs> be you, smart man? man don't stare at it unless you have the right eye equipment if that's eye yeah equipment. or glasses you could just say glasses yeah. i guess glasses work yeah so man. it's gonna be dark for two hours is that what's gonna happen no it's like partial in california so it's like a one third of the sun will be covered by the moon so it'll be that's, a little weird that's like one third of an event i'm excited i i have like <laughs> one third excitement for this yeah man yeah. um Real quick, if you guys be so kind, like, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications uh, for myself as well as Grant. This is on both channels. Uh, Grant's, Grant's got a lot of subs, but I, I'm trying to get over 10K myself before the yeah. season starts, and I'm on my way. So hit me up. And, uh, and, and this is powered by Hensley Real Estate and Mortgage. That's my company. And also listen to the Ryan G. Hensley Show wherever you get your podcasts. And then my last plug, I promise, subscribe to Meal Tickets. I started a second channel where I'm going to be interviewing millionaires self-made millionaires um because i want to be a millionaire myself and so i'm interviewing them hopefully i can learn from them so check that out it's mill tickets m-i-l-l -L, tickets all right that's all i wanted to get off my chest grant and i actually have a lot to talk about um believe yeah. it or not and it's hard at this time of year to have a lot to talk about that's so what i do, do. that's what i do that's dig deep you're 13 you're 14 it's nothing man. it's like breathing yeah yeah well so here's what we got on the, on the plate man will the 49ers go offense or defense with pick 31 should the 49ers sign xfl kicker jack bates uh what's the number one reason the 49ers haven't been able to get over the hump and what sophomore player will make the hufanga leap and i'll explain what that means and then contract year loading who balls out that's it right i'm not missing anything i think that's it that's a yeah. that's a solid show and i oh did i say brock Purdy ranking i got a rank oh well, that's the that's the the featured event the featured yeah mm -hmm. let's featured start with that guy ba man mm -hmm. um is brandon Ayuk a top wide receiver pff uh, first of all how much do you give pff how much credit do you give pff i mean some a lot like i, I would it's not gospel and there are other services that do the same thing like sys data hub which is free so i kind of compare them but i would look at it what do they think of brandon Ayuk? They got him number two, man. They got, they got number two. Their top five are mm -hmm. uh, Tyreek Hill, Brandon Ayuk, Nico Collins, Amon, Amon Ross St. Brown, and mm -hmm. Justin Jefferson. Okay. They got I got Jefferson didn't play much last year. Sis Data Hub has it in terms of advanced receiving, not like, like, like rushing grades and blocking, just receiving. CeeDee Lamb, number one. Amon Ross St. Brown, number two. And Brandon Ayuk, number three from last year. Tyreek Hill, number four. So that's two different places that put him top three. And what's kind of remarkable about it, I think he's there a lot because of his efficiency and his yards yeah. per catch. But he's really he's on the 30th most passing team in the NFL. Yeah. They don't pass a lot. So mm -hmm. to be on this list, it's probably because of efficiency, but I can only imagine him on a pass-heavy team. What do you think, man? Is he top five in your opinion? I think he is. I mean, I think the only reason he's not is because he doesn't get the opportunities and it's not his fault. He's just on a team that doesn't pass very much and he has a lot of other weapons around him. But you look at some of his numbers, they're incredible. Like, First down percentage, what percentage of catches yield a first down? 82.7. Pretty nice. So 75 catches went for 62 first downs. That's incredible. You know what I mean? Like, and yeah. he didn't even get that much. Like, he got 18% of the target share. Tyreek Hill got 30% of the uh, Dolphins targets. And that's just yeah. a difference of play calling. Could Brandon Ayuk hold up with a 30% target share? Absolutely. Yes. So that's why if I were another team, I'd want to trade for Brandon Ayuk. I feel like you're almost buying low. What if the 40, like, I often think about what would Brandon Ayuk look like on a pass-heavy team? Or what if the 49ers did that? What what would it look like if the 49ers decide to be pass-heavy team? Can they do that? Do they have the personnel in place to do that? That's a good question. I mean, they don't on the offensive line, but they're a couple players away. They could get those guys. So the question to me really is the quarterback and the co and the coach. The quarterback's excellent, but he doesn't necessarily have an arm to threaten the whole field. 
and to take advantage of Brandon Ayuk's entire skill set. And the coach, I mean, the Shanahan's in general are just much more cutting edge, sophisticated when it comes to the run game than the passing game. I feel like the drop back passing game is rudimentary compared to what the other stuff they do. I think JT O'Sullivan kind of feels the, the same way when he breaks down what Kyle Shanahan's drawn up. Also, they have like a new pass game coordinator every year. Is this year? They don't even, is it Mick Lombardi this year? They haven't said. So I believe I, they that's would have to put more of an emphasis on it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think Brandon Ayuk could be definitely a top five wide receiver. I, I honestly probably wouldn't put him in there based on last year just because he, he didn't get a lot of targets. It's I like a projection. Could, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think he definitely could. He yeah. could be a top five receiver. He, he really honestly, what's Brandon Ayuk's weakness? Is it just top end speed? Is that it? I mean, top end speed and he led the league in yards per catch or damn near. Like he is a deep threat. That's what's crazy. I was watching Man Talk Sports just before coming on because my name is in a lot of his titles and I'm vain. So I wanted to see what he was saying. And he is hilarious. He also has some crazy um, football takes. He said that Brandon Ayuk is an older, slower Christian Watson. It's like, pardon? Excuse me? He's, He's got what? some interesting takes. I, I, he uses Excuse our me? names in his titles to get I love uh, that. Doing that. views. He's smart. Yeah. I told him he's smart, but he talks yeah. a lot of trash. Called he me does. an idiot. So I said, hey, man. Oh, just, so he can get it back. Come on my come on my live show and tell me that I I don't think he's got I, I don't think he's that guy I think he's more comfortable making videos off air and not live, um, yeah. but he, but his worst take that I saw was that Jerry Rice he was explaining why Brandon Ayuk's not that important and he was saying Jerry Rice really like even if the 49ers didn't have Jerry Rice they still would have been good Jerry Rice really wasn't uh, responsible for any of those Super Bowl wins that was the craziest uh, take I've ever had seen say well this is like an extended plug for man talk sports I think he's funny and the best stuff he does when he talks about history he'll just randomly go into why Julius Caesar was the goat and I was like I want to hear that it was great it was really really a good explanation with like visual aids and stuff but yeah, yeah. Uh, older slower Christian Watson no the way I look at Brandon Ayuk is he's the most well-rounded wide receiver in the league like He's a lot like Justin Jefferson. He's not Justin Jefferson, but he's a better blocker than Justin Jefferson. He can run Justin Jefferson's entire route tree. I'd probably take Justin Jefferson over Ayuk. I think Justin Jefferson's the best wide receiver in the league, but if you put Ayuk on that offense and took Jefferson out, they wouldn't fall off. It'd be the same thing. The thing about B.A., I think Justin Jefferson probably has better hands. I'll, I'll give him that. And he's... The thing about Brandon Ayuk that none of these other guys really, I'm trying to think of any of these guys that would be able to hold a candle to him from a, just a toughness, blocking yeah. toughness. Like a lot of these receivers are your typical modern receiver. You know, they're not going to block this crap out of you. They're not the toughest. Going dude. over the middle like that. Right. But Brandon Ayuk's really tough, man. And that's yeah. why I think he's perfect for the 49ers. What do you He's think got that happened? blend of finesse and toughness because a lot of guys who are tough like that aren't route runners like him. You know, you think of tough wide receivers being guys like Anquan Bolden or yeah. Larry Fitzgerald who are kind of slow and not good at un beating man-to-man -man coverage, but he's got all that finesse. Yeah, I mean, who would you have? I mean, Tyreek Hill, he, and, and it's, it's again, it's, they're different players, right? Tyreek Hill and Brandon Ayuk, they're not even very similar. They both catch passes. That's pretty much all they have in common. Um, Easy. But you got Tyreek Hill, Nico Collins, Amon Ross St. Brown, Justin Jefferson. They got CeeDee Lamb, Jalen Waddle, Puka Nakua. They have it eight, and I think Puka Nakua is really good. But where would you rank B.A.? I mean, top five, yes, but where in that top five do you think you I mean, Tyreek Hill is like 30, right? He's not a I'm young. Tyreek Hill. He's Eight. still fast, though. He's 30. He's about to be, he just turned 30. Yeah, he's fast, but I don't really trust wide receivers after 30. I feel like they're on borrowed time. So of all those guys, I'd take Ayuk. I would. I think he's got yeah. three, four years of his prime ahead of him. Uh, another guy who's really good, Nico Collins. That guy's really good. Yeah. He's very good. Yeah. And he's a little bit younger than Ayuk. Those two guys are great. I'm on Ross St. Brown. I'm a little curious. He seems like a slot receiver to me. I feel like Ayuk can play slot and outside. I'm curious about Amon Ross St. Brown. But he's a good player, too. I mean, the fact that... CJ Stroud as Nico Collins and now Stefan Diggs is going to be. I expect that guy to light it up, man. I really do. I, yeah, I feel like a smart team should be should be calling the Niners right around the draft and making an offer for Brandon Ayuk because well, if you give him if you give up a late first and you pay him twenty seven million a year, I still think you could end up he could end up out producing that if you just give him a lot of opportunities. I could only imagine BA with like uh, Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid or Josh Allen. 
Josh Allen. Bills need somebody. One one reason I think a lot of people are speculating that Brandon and I might get traded to the Bills for the 28th pick. I don't think that's enough for the 49ers personally, unless they're offering a bunch of futures. But I think the Bills are definitely going to be drafting a wide receiver at 28, I would imagine. Bills would be perfect for him. Chargers. Justin Herbert. Like, that's the kind of arm that you'd like to pair with Brandon Ayuk because Brandon Ayuk is going to win all those routes by the sideline and down the, and, and up the field. Um, and Purdy, as good as he is, isn't throwing those passes that much. Does some, just to keep you honest, but that's not really what his where he's living. Yeah, yeah. Let's get some some of these super chats. Brother Bob says, morning, guys. Iglet, should I get suited and booted? I'm having Brother Bob do a show with me next weekend. Um, it's up to you. It's up to you, man. I'm not telling you what to do. He's got a lot of them. He's a, he's a professional man. Yeah. Yeah. Brother Bob's awesome. Yeah. You guys yeah, should do yeah. a night. You guys should do a night show because usually he's wind up a little bit by at, at that point. Oh, okay. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The My scouting report on Brother Bob. Yeah. Uh, it's NorCal Bro says if no trade up in the first taking O line at 31 is a mistake. You're not getting top talent there while you can still get top talent at other positions. We actually are going to talk about what they're going to do at 31. So maybe we'll we'll come back to that. Yeah. But uh, I, I got mixed feelings on that one, NorCal, bro. But I know what you're saying. Dave Barkley. Have you ever talked to Dave Barkley on the phone, Grant? No. I talked to him last week on the phone. For real? That's cool. Dude has the best voice ever. He should be For on real? the radio. Yeah. And Damn. he's like 6'8". Jeez. Shout out to Dave. So Shout out to Dave. On. Did I miss much? Love you guys. Nah, we just started. We talked about how you can, whether he's a top five receiver. And both yeah. Pro Football Focus and Sys Data Hub think that he was last year. Shout out to Dave, man. Shout out to Dave. Matt. And Matt McCallan, look, the whole crew is here. Says B.A. is a top five wide receiver in the league. If he gets traded, you will see why he can't show full potential in this offense. Can't. Agreed. There's only so much you can do running digs all day. Agreed. Agreed. Let me get into ranking Brock Purdy. But I want to. I want to get your take on this. I, I I put together some cheap little graphics. Okay, this is the I first like graphic. That. The first graphic I want to show you, sir. These guys to me are no question better than Brock Purdy. I think some people will say Stroud is because they only had one year. They might argue that, but I would. Who else is going to argue? Is this argue arguable? That. Only one I'm curious about at this point is Rodgers. Like, what is, is he? Is he done? I don't know. Probably, maybe not. If he's not done, then I'm putting him there. But man, he fell apart after four snaps last year. I'm curious to see what he looks like. That's the only question I got. Yeah, from a health perspective, I could understand that. But this is the two-time MVP, Super Bowl champion. I, like, For sure. me, he, when he's on, when he's on clicking, he's one of the best quarterbacks I've he's ever just seen. Forty. I just want to want to know what his body's like. Like last year, I would yeah. expected him to be in here, but. Yeah, I would still yeah. put him here. I'm with it. I agree. All right. So these seven to me aren't very arguable. Um, so we got seven here. That a best case scenario, Brock Purdy's eight. But here's these next eleven. I think there's some guys I would say are better than Brock Purdy, and some guys I would I'm not sure. And then there's some guys I would say no. So I, I, out of these next eleven, your choices are Dak Prescott, Brock Purdy, Jared Goff, Russell Wilson, Jordan Love. Trevor Lawrence, uh, Kyler, uh, Cousins, Tua, Hertz, and Herbert. Out of these 11, and then there, there's some guys like maybe could have put on this kind of list, like Baker Mayfield, Geno, but I don't really think Baker Mayfield and Geno should be on this list. I think they're below all these guys, personally. Um, so these 11, to me, are the what makes it a debate, right? We already established he's not in the top seven, but out of these next 11... Who do you have better? I'm going to write it down. Who, who, not necessarily who you have better, but how many of these guys are better, and you can name them, than Brock Purdy? That's a good question. I'm not a big Dak Prescott fan. I feel like there's something missing with him. He's physically excellent at the position, but, man, he chokes in the playoffs. Jared Goff can't move. He's a good quarterback. Can't move. Russell Wilson is rapidly declining. Jordan Love's a hell of a player. Come back to him. Trevor Lawrence, it's hard to say I'd like Purdy better than Trevor Lawrence, but I haven't been that impressed with Lawrence in the NFL yet. I just haven't. Uh, Kyler, 
excellent athlete, but so many questions about his leadership and love of the game. Kirk yeah. Cousins coming off an Achilles, and he's 36. Tua? Hmm. Hurts? Like, Herbert, I would take over Purdy, for sure. Yeah. Although, there is some question with, with, with Herbert and his competitiveness and leadership. Like, he's, he's a mute. I think what Purdy, Purdy does deserve a lot of credit for his combination of maturity, uh, leadership at a young age, um, mobility, and accuracy and anticipation. Like, all that stuff is really, really good. Jordan Love is interesting, though. Like, he doesn't have the, the supporting cast that Brock Purdy has. Uh, he hasn't played as long as Brock Purdy has. He kind of choked at the end of that playoff game. But he's improving, too. He's got some incredible physical gifts. I don't know if I'd take Jordan Love over. Like, I don't know if I could rank Love over Brock right now. But by the end of this season, he could be a pa he could be past Brock. So Love and Herbert, I guess, are two. And then Lawrence, Kyler. Kyler's interesting. I, what is he like mentally now? Um, because before he tore his ACL, there was all kind of questions about his like, what do you like better, Call of Duty or football? Has he rededicated himself? Like, I, I don't know. He's because physically he can do everything Purdy can do and more. Those are the ones that are interesting to me. I think from a leadership point, and we talked about this a little bit last week, from a leadership mental standpoint, Brock Purdy's as good as everyone on this list, if not better. If not better. Yeah, I mean, Cousins, Cousins, I think, has good leadership. Um, Hurts did until it got rough, and then he kind of – that that's when you get tested, right? When things right. fall off, and we don't know what it's going to look like when Brock, if Brock Purdy was ever in that situation. But when teams struggle, that's when you see, like, really what their leadership looks like. So and Russell Wilson is kind of have that fake leadership, you know, like – Super raw, raw kind of phony. Yeah, and I think I yeah. think his teammates feel that. So from a leadership standpoint, I think Brock is probably the top one on here, to be real. From the mental side, maybe Cousins. I I, I watched that quarterback special with Kirk Cousins, and he was uh, – I loved his personality. So I don't if know. If there were I got like you, a, an expansion draft right now, and you could just draft players and put them on your team in an NFL, would you take uh, – in an NFL team, would you take Purdy or uh, Love? See, the thing is, I had love above Purdy going into mm -hmm. last year. I had love above Purdy until the playoffs. But that last throw in the playoffs that Jordan Love made was, was like the dumbest decision I've ever seen in, in sports. It was terrible. Like, so that was, was I, that? I just yeah, I don't either either that revealed him to be a non serious quarterback or that was a young quarterback trying to be a hero with the game on the line. Can I tell you, can I confess something? I have a confession yeah. to make. Yeah. When I was 14, I was an all-star in baseball. And we went to the sectionals and we played like in the Central Valley. I think it was Willits, Willows or Willits, one of those two off I-5. Mm -hmm. And we were losing in the final inning. And we had the bases loaded. And I was up with two outs. Kind of in Jordan Love spot, but in baseball. And I swung at three pitches and struck out. I just I went up there. It. I was like, I'm going to be a hero. I'm going to do it. I got this. And I didn't get it. And everyone, I, I let everyone down. And, and then I didn't go on to be a major league player. So maybe that revealed that I wasn't really the truth at baseball at that point. I don't know what, what, why I revealed that right now, but it was important to say and get off my chest. Well, to defend you, baseball players, right? If you're a great hitter, you, you got what, a 400 batting average at best? So Yeah. I wasn't yeah. a great hitter. Yeah. I'll be the first to okay. say that. It's okay. a hard game. I wasn't either. I wasn't either. I was a good pitcher. I was For a real? good pitcher. Well, you're yeah. tall. My dad burnt my arm out though. Like I kind of like peaked at like 13, 14 years old. For real? Yeah. I had a friend who had Tommy John at 14. His dad, dad used to make me too. pitch a hundred pitches a day in the back. Yeah. That's That'll, your dad's fault. It'll it'll mess you up. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah, I mean, doing butterflies, laying on my back doing butterflies. I have no um, idea what that is, but that sounds like abuse. Yeah, I think it was abuse. So <laughs> back to this. Um, <clears throat> so you have how many guys over Brock Purdy? I would Herbert. take Love. I would take Herbert. Um, and then I think Lawrence and Kyler and Cousins and Prescott and Goffers. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is a tier right here. Like Goff, he can't move, but God, he's got a great arm. Like, like You know what I mean? Like, there's a bit of a trade off there. He can make every throw and Purdy can't. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think people say that Purdy can make every throw, but there's nothing on his throws. There's no velocity. He's floating them out there. 
So if I you think, have a few seconds, you can get to this, the sideline. I think when we're doing this exercise, like it's it's hard to do because it's all in your head, but you got to like imagine all of these quarterbacks on the Niners, full understanding of the offense, right? Not not a learning curve. Like they're on the Niners. They know the offense just as good as Brock Purdy. Who would you take before him? My list is Herbert. People won't like this. Cousins. Um, Trevor Lawrence. Those are my for sures. Goff and Prescott would be good on the Niners too. Yeah. Although they might get sacked a little bit more than Purdy. That's the one thing that also you got to give Purdy is he's playing behind not good pass protection. And he is quick and he does avoid a lot of sacks with just elusiveness and quick decision making that maybe Goff wouldn't. Right. Like Goff plays behind a great offensive line and has to. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, this is this is tough because you could imagine – I know Niner fans will hate this too, but you could Dak Prescott on the Niners might be really good. What about Tua? Tua to me, I, I I'm not. He might get hurt playing for the Niners, but I don't know. I don't. He's, see he's got a little bit better of a deep ball than Purdy. Plays in the same system. He's got Tyree Kill though. I don't know. I don't know. This is tough. That's what I'm saying. Like this is a this is literally yeah. a tier. I had those seven as the first tier, and this was my second tier of guys. Like you can make arguments. For any of these guys, and any of these guys could have a phenomenal year and step up above. I mean, even Russell Wilson, look, he he's corny, he has weird fake leadership, but this guy won a Super Bowl and he mm -hmm. his last year last year's in Seattle, horrible offense. On Denver, horrible offense. I, I don't yeah. like Sean Payton at all. So what's he gonna look like in Pittsburgh this year? I mean, he's shown us before he's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Can he make a comeback and do it again with a different offense? And they got a new offensive coordinator. I don't know who it is, but they fired last year's offensive coordinator. So I don't know, man. I don't this feel like tough. he moves like he used to. Yeah, Wilson. Like Purdy's much more qu uh, quicker and elusive than than Wilson at this point. But you're right. Like he's going to a team that was ten and seven without him last year. Let's see how that goes. Yeah. So I mean, that means Brock Purdy to me is anywhere between eleven and I don't know who who for sure would you not take over Purdy on this list? For me, it would be Tua. Hurts, Kyler Hertz is not a good fit for the Niners' offense. I don't feel no, no. And I wouldn't take Kyler either. I just don't like his his mental. Yeah, I don't. I don't trust it. Yeah, and so like I mean, Dak. I, I I don't know about Dak. He's just. I feel like he's been through some serious injuries. He's really expensive. But I think what we what what is instructive about this exercise is the fact that I wouldn't pay Brock Purdy sixty million dollars a year, fifty five million dollars a year. I think that's a big mistake. Maybe he'll prove me wrong over the next year, but if this is the tier he's in, this is the tier of don't pay this dude hella money. Even Herbert, like, they paid him all that money. They're struggling to win, and now Harbaugh's going to see if he can salvage it, but if not, they're going to get rid of Herbert because if you're making $60 million, you have to be a tier one quarterback, not a tier two quarterback. End of story. Yeah, and I think Herbert could make that jump under he could. Harbaugh. I mean, he could. Look, look, look what he did for Alex Smith. He can do that for mm -hmm. Alex Smith. He, he can probably do that for Herbert. So I think Herbert is the, Herbert's the one guy. He's the best guy on this list to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think the right coaching, he could elevate to that elite level. Mm -hmm. And then there'd be eight elite quarterbacks instead of seven. But I agree with you. Like, if I'm running an organization, unless I consider you elite, one of those top seven, eight guys or nine guys, then I'm not paying you because. <laughs> you're not going to get to where you want to go with a guy who's not elite. And you're going to have to change your entire team structure for him. And you're going to have to get rid of so many players and you're going to have to ask him to carry your team. And that's just not how you're built. You're not a passing team. You pay all that money for a quarterback. Like he should, you should be able to win if he throws 55 times in a game. You should be able to win that game. Niners can't win like that. It's not how they're built. It's not Brock's fault, but... The offensive line, the quarter, like the, the the play caller, it's not how they're built to win. So why are you spending all that money on your quarterback? Just because it's hard to find one? Yeah, now, but how many quarterbacks could have success on this team? So two things. First thing I reported on Friday on my channel is uh, I talked to a guy within the Niners who said that the 49ers are prepared to pay Brock, Brock Purdy top quarterback money. Well, Ted York already said it. Yeah. Yes. And, but But it was assuming that he has a similar year that he had this year. Uh, obviously, he needs to stay healthy. But then th the thing that was interesting is they said they're going to try every trick in the book, though, to keep it as low as possible. 
I don't know what that means necessarily. Maybe they're talking about structuring their contract where everything's on the back end, mm. or I, I don't know what that meant. But um, they're prepared to pay Brock now. In defense to Brock, he had a hell of a year last year, coming off UCL injury, no offseason. This year he has all of that. So where I'm telling you Brock is right now, or what I'm saying to, to the people watching about Brock right now, he could definitely elevate uh, coming into this next season, uh, you know, with a full off season, healthy. I could definitely see him making a jump. Maybe he reaches that elite threshold where you do want to happen. It could definitely happen, but I don't think the Niners really care. I think he's good enough right now. And they're not a team that's like hell bent on winning a Super Bowl. They want to win a Super Bowl. They would love to win a Super Bowl. But if they fall short, they're still going to pat themselves in the back and celebrate the little victories or the big ones that they got along the way. That's how they look at it. So keeping Kyle Shanahan in place, keeping Brock Purdy in place, keeping a team that can be a Final Four finisher is what they want. And then they're just going to sell to their fans that if they don't win it, there was a holding penalty that didn't go their way or there was some bad luck. And next year, they'll get, they'll get, that's what they say. I, they're going to extend him. They don't have high standards like that. That they would absolutely cash out a tier two quarterback, even if that's all he could be. Yeah, it may happen. I expect it to happen because I expect him to have at least a similar year to last year, based on the way he plays. Like it, what he accomplished was just, and I, I don't mean to discredit him, but he was he was passing to some of the most wide open, if not the most wide open receivers yeah. in the NFL, and I expect that's going to be the same case this year as well. Like so, the numbers say he's a tier one quarterback, but the numbers say two is a tier one quarterback. We know that's not the case. Over yeah. here on the West Coast, we can look at the at South Beach and be like, oh yeah, two is two is Fugazi. Well, well, what about the quarterback over here in the same system with even better weapons? I mean, the numbers say Jared Goff is a, uh, a tier one quarterback. The numbers yep. say Cousins is a tier one quarterback. So, you know, the people arguing about statistics that are going to watch this and get mad. I mean, you got to say the same thing. For Dak Prescott. Had the best stats in, in the league last year. But he's not a tier one quarterback. And we know that. Yeah. You had so, the tiers. And the, the only one I even argued with was Aaron Rodgers. I feel like he might be retired. <laughs> but we'll see. If not, he is a tier one quarterback. There's seven. And I feel like there's always seven. Yeah. That's the number. At any given time in the league, there's seven. And Purdy isn't one of them yet. And, and what really sucks is that if you take those seven and these 11, that's 18. That means there's... 14 quarterbacks that aren't even. And that's the NFL's problem. It's a quarterback driven sport, but like half the league doesn't have one that's worth watching. And that's why it's going to okay. be difficult to expand, right? Yeah. They talk about expanding, getting more teams in the NFL, but how do you do that if only 18 quarterbacks are exactly quarterbacks? You know, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. All right, let's get some of these super chats. Uh, Dave says, I did one call in on the cone phone. That's last true, year. Dave. I'm sorry I forgot that. You were wonderful. You you forget his very white voice? Ooh. Yeah. Now that you mention it, no. <laughs> Matt McCallan says, Lawrence suffers from bad wide receiver that play. That's true. He's because uh, Trent Balky's picking the receivers. <laughs> uh, but he's got Eric Armstead now. Um Jordan Love has a better head coach who develops the quarterback. Give me Jordan Love all day long. And I, I think Jordan Love has his own issues. He's had some playoff collapses as well. But, yeah, he has developed quarterback. I could see Jordan Love being better than Brock Purdy on the 49ers. I could see that being a possibility. He has more talent. He has a better army. He has more talent. It's just that last, though, in the playoffs was like, what kind of decision was that? Yeah. It was the worst decision I think I've ever seen. So I'm a little hesitant on Jordan Love, but I want to give him a pass because I got to give myself a pass for striking out when I was 14 in Willits. <laughs> yeah, but you know, the thing is too, though, Jordan Love's not a, a typical, he feels like he's a rookie because we haven't seen him play, but he's like, what, 26 years old, 25 years old. He's been in the NFL for four or five years. He's 25. Yeah. He's 25. So he's it's not like he was rock. a young rookie making no. a young rookie mistake that that's a 25 year old mistake right there and that's but still you're still improving at 25 and it, it was his first his first pre his first playoff game he freaking destroyed the cowboys and in his second playoff game he did really well until the very final very final drive and yeah, yeah that was bad he choked he choked it wouldn't surprise me though the packers and love are like really good this year either so that 
it's all possible. That's what's exciting about yep. New Year, right? Every 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 year, different things people step up. Plus, he could be the he could be an MVP candidate this year. Him, I mean, really, him and Stroud, he could Love could be a tier one quarterback by the end of this year. He could take Rogers' spot if Rogers falls off. Falls off. And and I I predicted that Stroud was going to be a good NFL quarterback. I said he's the best one in that draft. But I didn't expect him to do what he did. So it's it's the same thing this year. Yeah. There could be a rookie that shoots up to the elite level this year as well. Caleb Williams. What do you think about Caleb Williams? He's a little strange. <laughs> he's like not like strange. Like he's just a, he seems like a, an attention seeking diva, which mm. I don't really like quarterbacks like that. Yeah. He lost to UCLA this year. We suck. Yeah, I don't understand. I don't know. Like he seems really good. His but, defense was trash, though. Yeah, sure, whatever. It's USC. We're UCLA. Our defense. I think our defense was good. I don't even know. Anyway, it was. he seems like an attention-seeking diva, and I'm curious to see what happens when he gets booed by the Bears fans. He's going to the Bears, right? It's not going to go well it's right away. Well. They suck, yeah. especially on offense. And when he goes three and out and they boo him, like, what's he going to do? Yeah, the mental part is so important. I mean, that's yeah. what's the best thing about Brock is his leadership and his, and yep. his mindset. Um, it's, it's very important. Um, yeah, I mean, it's ninety. I think it's probably ninety percent of the position. You know. Yeah. Um, Matt McCallan under Herbert zero twenty eight plus points per game. D gives up twenty nine points per game. Right. The D. Def, the so would you do me a favor and go back to tier one real quick? Yes, sir. I like that visual. And what's great, real quick, Matt, is that we we just signed the head coach of the Chargers that gave up twenty nine points. Yeah, he's great. And he's a visionary. Here you go. Okay, okay, okay. So of those quarterbacks, Stafford and Rodgers are sort of on the decline. They're older. Uh, Stafford's still tier one, but those two could be the ones that leave the, the soonest and they'd be replaced by Herbert and Love, Herbert and Purdy. Also, Lamar has a lot to prove too. Like we've gotten to the point now where his playoff performances are a thing. It's happened multiple times. He's had some good playoff games, but really not many. So Lamar has has things to answer for too, even though he's a two-time MVP. And and you can't take that from him. The one thing I don't like about Lamar, man, he's so untraditional. Like he can take over a game if things are going right. But it's very to me, it's when you're a like when you're coaching, it's very hard to coach a player where every game's a little different. And because Lamar is such a phenomenal athlete and can do so many different things, it's really hard to predict what he's gonna do because everything's kind of off script and it's very mm -hmm. hard to coach in that way, right? I think it might drive Kyle Shanahan crazy because he's so unpredictable in what he's going to do. Um, and I think that might be a part of the reason why they continue to lose in the playoffs. When yeah. I saw him in person play against the Niners, I was convinced that that was the second best quarterback I've ever seen in person after Mahomes. He made yeah. it look easy. Uh, he never broke a sweat. He destroyed the 49ers. Um, and in the playoffs, I felt like his play caller just didn't call runs and put the whole game on Lamar's shoulders. And he it brought out the worst in Lamar. Like he uh, regressed and started playing black background football in a way he wasn't playing against the Niners a month before. So I can't absolve Lamar of all blame. He's the MVP and he's making all that money. But his play caller didn't do him any favors. He had Gus Edwards averaging like six yards a carry and gave him two or three carries. And now he's the starting running back for the Chargers. So, ah, I don't know. Matt so says Caleb Williams is the new Dennis Rodman. Is he that talented, though? I don't know if that's it. Might be an insult to my guy Dennis. I got to see Caleb Williams do it. And Dave says, I mean, Caleb like the whole thing with the with the with the uh, with the nails, right? It's like fine, whatever. But you you did it, and you went on TV, and it's kind of like you did it for attention. And then when people predictably were like, yo, that's kind of weird on social media. He was like responding like, well, what are you talking about? It's like, is this not all for attention? Didn't you, you know what I mean? Like that's the kind of stuff that I don't know. Tom Brady didn't do. Uh, Patrick Mahomes doesn't do like, don't you get enough attention for being the number one pick? You have to really do stuff like this. I don't know. Something about him strikes me as a guy I wouldn't really trust to invest in. Maybe his focus is a little off. Tom, yeah, some. Yeah, um, and then oh, Dave says Caleb's going to cry on the sidelines a lot. I wouldn't be surprised. And Matt McCallan says Lamar does so much in regular season battle of attrition gets him in the playoffs. That may be the case as well. So where do we side? Let's wrap this up. Where do we side? Brock Purdy is he's between twelfth and fifteen, eleven and fifteen, right now. I mean, uh, we've had seven. 
at, at, as high as 10, maybe. Yeah. You could as high as 10, um, but probably 11, 12, something like that. And it could change this year. So don't, don't get upset with us over our rankings. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's move on, man. 31st pick in the NFL draft. Um, how do the Niners go? And I'm going to let me, you want me to read off who's going to be available around that time? Sure. So I just did a little mock with PFF just to see kind of who's going to be around. Uh, a lot of defensive players on this draft went off the board right before the Niners pick. By Byron Murphy, uh, Johnny Newton, Darius Robinson, Kool Aid McKinstry all went off the board right before the Niners uh, were there to draft. Now, if one of those guys falls, that opens it up more. Kian Coleman went to the Ravens. I'm not sure if that's going to happen. And then the guys remaining on this board are Cooper DeJean, um, safety. And then the next six guys are offensive guys Graham Barton, Michael mm -hmm. Penix, Xavier Worthy, Bo Nix, Kingsley, Jordan. Morgan and Christian Hayes. How do you see the 49ers going at 31? Uh, <laughs> well, they just went heavy defense in free agency, right? Heavy. Uh, particularly in their front seven. So you would think, well, they're going to balance it out in the draft and do offense, right? No. Absolutely not. Look at their draft history. Since Kyle's been here. All their first round picks, they've taken an offensive player twice McGlinchey and Trey Lance each time there was a major major need they were trying to fill uh an immediate need or the most important position now on offense they brought back all 11 starters they're not looking for a quarterback of the future they're not looking to fill any need right now so uh, history would suggest they're going defense and then where on defense are they going well they've never spent Higher than a third round pick on a DB since Kyle's been here. Am I wrong? I think that's correct. That's correct. Now, yeah. Trent Balky drafted Jimmy Ward in round one and Eric Reed in round one, but I don't believe John Lynch, who was the third round pick himself, if I'm not mistaken, has ever spent higher than a third round pick on a DB. So history would suggest it's not going to be a corner or a safety. It's going to be another player in the front seven, a linebacker, a D lineman, because that's what the 49ers do. That's what they do. That's what it's going to be. That's the priority. Come back in, in three weeks and tell me I'm wrong. I, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, the, the 49ers, I think they're going to take the best player available, but then they also weigh what their priorities are. They do have priority at corner and, and safety, but you did lay out a good point. Maybe they learn from that. Maybe they think we need to, but the others, and here's the thing too, out of the four anticipated starters on the 49ers defensive back unit, Huff, Brown, uh, Ward and Lenore, only one of them's in contract. So uh, what are they going to do about that? Are they going to extend them before the season starts or are they going to leave it like that? If they're going to leave it like that, they kind of do need to get younger. They do, but they could always take DBs in around three, four, five. I mean, they take a corner around five darn near every year. You know, Darrell Luter, Sam Womack, Diamador Lenore. That's where they like to take DBs because the way they look at it is they're not asking them to do much. You're playing zone. You're not matching up man-to-man -man with the best wide receiver in the league. You're playing zone and tackling. We can get you in round five. And I think that was the chief, I mean, excuse me, the Seahawks philosophy 10 years ago. I mean, what was Richard Sherman, his fifth round pick, something like that. Yeah. They had success with that, but it's because they're playing zone. If you want to get a guy who could play top-level man-to-man coverage, you got to get him in round one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what they're looking for. I think another need they have is defensive tackle. Um, they got to get younger there. They don't really have a future there right now. The next one on the board is uh, Devondre Sweat. Uh, Rook, oh, I don't know how to say his name. Uh, Arohoho, Leonard Taylor, the third, Good Michael job. Hall Jr. But these guys are ranked 41st, 48, 53, 58. If, I, I think like if, if Darius Robinson or uh, Chop Robinson or Johnny Newton or Byron Murphy, if those guys fall to, to 31. Those they can't help themselves. Yeah. But the other position is linebacker. That's a position the Niners have drafted in round one. Reuben Foster at pick 31. So I don't know if there's someone they have ranked that highly. They could always trade down into round two and take a linebacker there. But Devondre Campbell was not their first choice. He's like their third choice. And Dre Greenlaw could come back week one, but he probably won't. And you don't really know what you're going to get from Greenlaw and Campbell moving forward. So I really wouldn't be surprised if they took a linebacker with their first pick. 
Well, I'm looking at the board. Linebacker first pick. Not not one linebacker off the board before we get there. I think the highest, the highest, unless you're talking about a pass rushing linebacker. No. But the, but the highest linebacker is Edrin Cooper, and he's not ranked till 50. Right. Peyton Wilson, 64. The guy I really like. Are you on? Are you on? Are you on Draft Tech? I'm on Pro Football Network. Pro Football Network. Let me see on Draft Tech. There's also CBS. The guy I really I'm, like is Cedric Gray, but he's they have him at like 66. They could probably get him in round two or three. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of highly ranked linebackers this year. There really aren't. Yeah, Cedric Gray, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. That might be a spot they take on day two. But in which case, you know what? They'll just take a D lineman again. It feels like that's what it's going to be. But yeah, they're going to take a D lineman. Let's talk about the offensive lineman though, like because I feel like that's what I want them to get. And I think a lot of people want them to get. That's what I wanted them to get last year. I wanted them to draft DeWan Jones instead of the kicker. Um, they didn't go that route. I feel like they got to get an offensive lineman. So let's talk about that. Kingsley Suma. I, I hate butchering my Polynesian brothers and sisters' names, but Kingsley Sumatia Tea, Jordan Morgan is available. Uh, I, I tackle, and then uh, Christian Hayes at guard, and then Graham Barton, who's listed as a center. Uh, those guys are available. Those are probably your top par- prospects. You don't see them going any of those directions. I feel like what the Niners would do, and you have a pretty good feel for how they handle their offensive line. Unless they're looking for a guy who's going to start right away, they're probably not taking him in round one. And right. I don't think they're looking for a, an offensive lineman to start right away. They might be looking for a guard to replace Aaron Banks in a year or John Feliciano in a year or a tackle to replace McKivitz down the line. But that feels like a second round pick. I mean, like Aaron Banks was a second round pick. They took him a year before Lake and Tomlinson left in free agency. They knew they weren't going to resign Lake and Tomlinson, that he was going to get paid a ton of money. They could do the same thing with Aaron Banks this year. Like, look, he's not a pro bowler, but Robert, neither was Robert Hunt. He's got $100 million on the open market. Uh, the guard market's incredible. We won't be able to resign Aaron Banks. Let's take a guard in, in round two. They could do something like that. Here's the thing is like I'm looking at, right? The 49ers are picking at 31. It's not like they got a top 15 draft pick here. They're picking at 31. Are any of these players that they draft, no matter who it is, no matter what position, are they going to start for the 49ers week one? Probably not if the Niners had it their way, right? that's That's why I'm going to linebacker. I feel like a linebacker could start week one. If Dre Greenlaw isn't healthy, there's a good chance any linebacker you take in round one or round two is better than Devondre Campbell at 32. A good chance, not a, not a slam dunk, but there's a there's a possibility because Devondre Campbell was not good the last two years. Yeah, I'm just wondering, like, if the Niners are thinking about this, like, if we're not going to draft a starter with our first round draft pick, then why don't we get a position that we can build around? And to me, that's the the player on here that I think has a huge upside, but definitely won't start week one. But again. Who's going to start on week one on this team? Out of all these players I listed, you know, maybe if uh, McKinstry is available or one of those defensive tackles drops, maybe th- those guys could start week one. But outside of that, I don't see a lot of guys starting week one. So, yeah, they took what they I would take a corner in round one. It's just, I just, they haven't, they haven't done it. Haven't done the it. last corner they took in round one as a franchise. I don't remember. It must have been decades ago. I don't, Ronnie Lott? I don't even know. Yeah. R.W. McCorders. That might have been R.W. McCorders. Med Plummer. Mike Rumpf. Wow. So here's my theory. Kingsley Sumatea, Sumate, I've, I've watched him. He is very, he has some huge high-end talent. He just, he's raw. He needs mm-hmm. to get with Forrester and, and redshirt a year. And I think he could be really, really good. He just won't be good enough right now to start, but if none of these guys are going to start, if they really look at their team, how how deep this team is, how hard it is to break the starting lineup under Kyle Shannon, if nobody's going to start, then get the position of need with Kingsley. Yeah. I mean, you look at the backup tackles on this team, Jalen Moore and Brandon Parker. Neither right. one should really ever see the field. So, yes, offensive tackles a huge need. Trent Williams misses time every season. If they could get a high-level swing tackle, someone who could be the backup at both spots and then – Start eventually, that would be a great pick in any round. 
That's who I want. I want him to make that investment. And then the, the argument is he's not going to start week one, but I'm looking at this. Unless some of these dudes drop, who's going to start week one anyways? You know? So why not go for the need? The best player available at your need. I don't know. I just I just know that 49ers have to invest attack. They didn't but they didn't draft one offensive lineman last year. They got Colton McKivitz with one more year after this, who's mid at best. Trent Williams misses time. He's going to be retiring soon. What are you going to do? When are you going to make that investment? They have to do it. That's what I would do. What would you do this year if you were the GM of the Niners? Yeah, uh, I wouldn't have extended Colton McKivitz. But even though that they did, I, that wouldn't change anything um, if I had just gotten the job right now. This mm -hmm. is a historically good class for offensive tackles. Historically good. It's mm -hmm. talented. It's deep. Why would you pass on that? Why would you pass on that after you passed on it last year? Got to take an offensive tackle. I would trade up for one. That's probably what they should do, honestly, yeah. is get, yeah. a guy that will, get a guy that will supplant McKivitz right now. Like trade up and, and go get the guy that you think is going to make a difference on the offensive line right now. And that might be Tyler Gut uh, Gutton. That might be who that is. And the, on this draft, they, he's going to Green Bay at 25. So they would have to yeah. have. I mean, the Niners way. traded up from 31 to 25 four years ago for Ayuk, and it cost them a fourth and a fifth rounder. The Niners have, what, 10 picks this year? They have plenty of picks on day three. Flip a couple to move up six spots and get the guy you want as opposed to just hanging at 31, keeping your fingers crossed, and then trading down if your guy isn't there. That's the solution. Trade up, go get the offensive tackle yeah. that you want. That's it. It's not that hard. It's not that complicated. It's a great class for offensive tackles. You need one. Don't miss on it. There you it's go. John Lynch. John Lynch, Kyle, we just told you exactly what you need to do. Yeah. Get it. Get it because done. if Trent Williams misses nine games this year, you're fucked. <laughs> it's true. Pardon my that's French. True. That's one way to say it. Yeah, I agree. Matt McCallum says, sorry, Ryan, back comparison. Caleb is the Jackson Mahomes of quarterbacks. Ouch. Dave Barkley says, how many moves can we make with this many picks? Yeah, and don't we have – do we still have 10 or is it nine now because of the loss of a, a draft? Pick? Good question. Because they traded one from Elite Collins and they lost. No, but the one they lost is next year. Next year. So they have 10 still. I think they have 10 still. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Dave Barkley says, how many moves can we make? So I think we can make one. One trade with picks. We could trade players too. And I don't think trading BA is necessarily off the table completely. Um, it's a possibility. It's not off the table. I mean, it's not. It depends on what offers they get and how much money uh, Brandon Ayuk wants. But this isn't something that would happen now it would happen like day of the draft yeah and yeah. then have we traded up since ba our guy got trey, in, trey. yeah got remember him? Trey Lance. <laughs> they did that they traded up for jair brown last year they traded up for trey sermon and then look at this oh, 50 dollars super chat from dave dave's Ooh. the best guy in the world Ooh. he says we all appreciate the guys i bet nearly every person in this chat looks forward to these shows i know i do these are the bright spots of my days at times. This has become my favorite show. No disrespect, no disrespect to anyone else. I just like seeing you do you. Ryan's the man. Thank you, Dave. Damn, man. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. Uh, can't. Not enough words for how much support you give me, brother. I appreciate it. All right, let me ask yeah. you about this kicker because I don't know anything about him. All I know is he's the same name. His name is Jake. Me. Hold on. It's Jake Bates, okay, not okay. Jack. You know why I said you, let me fix it. You know why I said Jack? My right. good my good friend, uh, his little brother is named Jackie Bates. Okay. And he played he played corner in the NFL for the Chiefs. And so I crossed it. Let me fix that. Jake Bates, kicker. Tell me why we need Jake Bates. Okay. Jake Bates is in the XFL. He plays for the Michigan Panthers. Last week he kicked a 60, he made a 64 yard field goal. And Recently, he made a 62-yard field goal in the second game of the season. Um, he was a kickoff specialist in college. I'm getting this from NBC Pro Football Talk. He was a kickoff specialist in college and hadn't hit a field goal in a game since high school until he did it last week. This is according to Michael David Smith. Um, so I'm not saying, like, replace Jake Moody with this kickoff specialist who has a strong leg, but maybe bring him into camp. Remember there was a kicker competition last year between... Moody and Zane Gonzalez. Yeah. I th there, there needs to be another kicker competition. You can find kickers all over the place. 
And this dude in the XFL is balling out. Maybe he's improved. He, he's, he's someone that should be on the Niners' radar, every team's radar. Why the hell not? I mean, I, I so not? so I would say why not, right? Bring mm-hmm. in a guy that can compete. But here's the thing. I think the why not is if he – there's probably a part of Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch that want to be right about Moody. Of course. Right? Because they wanted to be right about keeping Armstead over Buckner, but eventually they admitted they were wrong. Hey, they did it with Trey. They admitted they were huh? wrong about Trey. Right? Yeah. So yeah, maybe, maybe. I don't see why not. Because the way I look at Moody right now is he's a strong. He's a he's a dude with a strong leg. This dude is a dude with a strong leg. Is either one consistent? Can either one hit an extra point in the Super Bowl if they really had to? That's my question. So yeah. line them up and have them compete. Maybe Jake Bates is the new Brock Purdy, and uh, Moody's the new Trey Lance. Yeah. Never know. I think it's Never good though. Always bring in competition. So if he's, I mean, that's what they. They should have drafted Dewan Jones and done something yeah. like this last year. That's what they should have yeah. done. Yeah. Um, so I'm all for it, man. If if uh, more competition can make this team better, I, I say do it, man. Yeah. And put your pride aside. All right. Yeah. Anything else on uh, our guy, Jake Mo- uh, Jake Bates? Uh, no. That's it. All right. Somebody is, I, you don't have to have, have a whole conversation, but there's a dude tearing it up in the XFL. Bring him to camp. I, lo- I love the XFL. What's it called now? Is it still the XFL? Is that what it's called now? Yeah. It's called something else, right? Yeah. Is it st- still the XFL? Still the XFL. Yeah. I thought they combined it and called it something else, but I love it because it's like a uh, it's like a minor league. Yeah. There should be a few players. You know who's tearing it up right now in the XFL? Ooh. Or Isaiah Winstead. Oh. How you like that? Yeah, how you like that? Niners finest. Yeah, bring him back. It. Yeah, bring that's cool. Back. All right, that's cool. What's the? I'd like one to see more quarterbacks go to the XFL and get some actual reps, man. I'm just saying, I think that would be good for the NFL. Quarterbacks getting reps in the off season. It's important. It's a game of reps. Get on the field. Like Trey Lance should be playing in the XFL. He needs to be. I don't know. I don't know why he can or what the deal is, but if I was agent, I want him playing in the spring. I know you can get hurt, but reps yeah he needs to be playing yeah all right what's the number one reason the 49ers haven't got over the hump meaning have not been able to get over the hump meaning win the super bowl i want to know your opinion before i say mine you know my opinion it's to me you know my you know my you damn well know my opinion tell me say it say it on say it on screen it's the head coach man it is the head coach it comes down to the head coach, the head Kyle coach. Shanahan. Yeah, yeah, that's my opinion. Tell me uh-huh. why why you agree. I mean, does the team ha- does the roster have certain weaknesses? Yes, every roster has weaknesses, but it's the best roster in the league. It's the best roster in the league, and it's not the best quarterback in the league. But he's a Pro Bowl quarterback, putting up incredible numbers. It's not his problem. The issue is the coach who can be the best offensive coach in the league for five and for five months for the whole season until the final quarter. And then all of a sudden he's someone else. He totally can't close. He shrinks. He's done it over and over again. Like people compare him to Marv Levy. Marv Levy never had the best team in the league. He lost to the freaking Cowboys who were a juggernaut repeatedly. So Kyle has the the Cowboys of the early nineties. That's his team right now. Like Purdy is Troy Aikman, young Troy Aikman, a, a good game manager. Who's a damn good player? That's the team they have. And he can't seal the deal. It's his fault. And I think what's crazy about it is it was like a controversial thing to say a few years ago. Hey, Kyle's actually the one holding him back. But now I think it's kind of understood. And I think even players in the team get it. And I wonder if you talk to someone like Eric Armstead, who's no longer on the team, or Jimmy Ward, or Aziz Alshair, or Charles Menehue, if they'd be like, yeah, man, they're not going to win the Super Bowl with that guy over there. I'm sorry. He's reached his he's reached his uh, his level. Yeah, I think when you look at the two Super Bowl losses, the first one, Jimmy Garoppolo. The thing is, when you're Kyle Shanahan, if you have all this power, mm-hmm. with with great power comes great responsibility, right? So, yeah. you guys brought Jimmy Garoppolo in and paid him, made him the highest paid NFL quarterback after five years, yeah, or at five games, which was extremely premature. Yeah, and I feel like that's why you lost that game Mm -hmm. and then you lose this last super bowl you could blame it on a cmc fumbled or so and so missed a block on the interior but 
ultimately, if if I look at them, the way that Super Bowl was lost, it falls on Kyle Shanahan to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if not because of his decision in overtime, because of the way he called plays in the third quarter, he got away from the run completely, which didn't make any sense to me. So ultimately, I asked him about that after the game too. That was my one question. Because I didn't really – after the game, can I just be honest? I didn't really understand what happened in, in overtime. I didn't get it. I wasn't watching on television. I didn't have Tony Romo explaining it. I just didn't get it. And when people were asking him questions, I was like, why? But that was my question. Why did you get away from the run game in the third quarter? And he looked at me with just disdain in his heart and said, I didn't get away from the run game in the third quarter. It's like, yeah, you did. But you did it again. You did it when you when you were the offensive coordinator with the Falcons. You did it when you had a big lead four years ago against the, uh, the Chiefs the first time. You did it again, dude. I don't understand it. Yeah. And it, so it, two things I want to clarify, too, because I know a lot of people are watching this and, and they're like, but we were trash, you know, before we got him. The thing is, Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch are also responsible for the elevation of the 49ers over the last mm -hmm. seven years. Um, I'm not saying that they're not no good at what they do, that they're not some of the best, that they're not two of the best coaches and GMs in the NFL. They are. Uh, but so far, they haven't been able to get over the hump, I think, because of Kyle. He's also the guy that elevated them, got them there, but that's also the reason why they haven't been able to secure the thing. I actually, and I don't, I don't know if we agree on this, but I actually think Kyle Shannon is only 44. He's my age. He has a long career ahead of him. Mm -hmm. At some point, I expect Kyle Shanahan to win a Super Bowl. I don't know mm -hmm. when it's going to be. I think he will at some point, but so far, I think he's been a big part of the reason he can't get out of his own way. I mean, here's the stat. So, like, we talk a lot about Kyle as a as a head coach. Like, they lost because he didn't know the rules or he couldn't manage the game. Like, yeah, that's true. But what about his offense? His offense was great last year in the regular season. Average 6.5 yards per play, tops in the league. In the Super Bowl, though, 5.4 yards per play, 19 points in regulation, 22 points overall. Like, that's not good offense. So what happened? If you go back and remember that game, to me, what was so interesting about it was it was he, he lived in that empty backfield formation. So many times, it would be five wide. It's like, what? Wait. That's not your offense. You are the under center play action motion guy, right? Like that's what you do. And it kills defenses. But now you're going to spread five wide. Like now in this game, why? And, and, like he'll do that. He will consistently do something that is completely out of character for no good reason and not explain it. And then just sort of in, in, imply that if you don't get it, you don't know ball. Like, okay. Why don't you just do what got you there, man? I think he likes to, wants to be clever. Yeah, like I think I think he you know like I'm watch me out smart Spagnolia. Like, no, you're not going to just do what we're good at. Do what you built this team to do. Play to your strengths and, and rely on that because that's what got you here. But I feel like he just wants to always be the clever. You know, after the game, they're gonna ask me why I did this, and that's why we won it. I feel like that's kind of his mentality. I think there's a little bit of a narcissism there. If you really believe you have the best team, you're not trying to counterpunch the other team. It's like, right. oh, well, they're loading the box or they did X, Y on Z on defense. So that necessitated us to go five wide. Like, no, dude, no. Like, you don't let them dictate to you. He always lets the other team dictate to him when the pressure's on. Dude, you have the best team. Your offense is better than their defense. You do what you do well. Not empty backfield 20 times. But that's what he did. And that's why I just can't, He's the problem. He's erratic under pressure. And I think his players know it. We're starting to see it. And that's why I kind of, like, we, we talk so much about accountability. Like you and I both do that. It's important that he, after these games, when he makes mistakes, that he admits those mistakes publicly. So his players see that and they understand he is acknowledging it and he's going to learn from it. That's why I think it's very important. Um, I, I was just reading a book about leadership and one of the key traits in leadership that they mentioned was account. It's a whole chapter. Accountability is one of the main traits of a good leader. And I, I think that's one of the things Kyle needs to improve on. And he, he might, again, he's, he's still relatively young from a coach's perspective. Yeah. Um, it, let me ask you a question though. Like that quality, like accountability, that's not necessarily like a football 
trait. Like that's a human trait. That's something people have or they don't. Is that something that you pick up at 44? Or is that something that you were kind of born with? I don't know if you're born with it, but you're raised with it. And I think a lot of. Like another word for accountability is like self objectivity. Like I was wrong. What I did wasn't the best thing. Like I, I don't know that Kyle's that kind of guy. Maybe privately he is. Maybe when he has meetings with John Lynch and Jed York, he's like, you know what? This was bad. I could have done better on these five plays. But when he presents himself to the public, it's, man, if you question me, you don't know ball. And I am 100% behind every decision I've ever made. Yeah. I mean, I'm hopeful behind the scenes that he's like that, but I doubt it. Do you think he stood in that locker room after the Super Bowl and was like, guys, this one's on me? Blame me. me. Blame it, me. It's not who he is. So. No. So that's why I wonder, like when you say he's going to win a Super Bowl one day, like maybe if he gets lucky, but he's not going to change. So I think at this point he's relying on luck. And frankly, this year he had the best team in the league and he was going against a down Chiefs team and still found a way to give up a lead, a 10 point lead, found fi figured it out. It was it was novel. What Kyle's great at is play design, not necessarily play calling in certain situations. Mm -hmm. And really what his strength is, honestly, what Kyle Shannon's strength is, is roster building. Yeah. That's what he relies on. Like he just builds the best team possible and plays with that, right? He designs plays for those players. He's a, a great roster builder. It's just game management, accountability, some leadership issues. And then certain calls at certain times, it just doesn't really add up to me. But again, he knows a lot more about football than I do. Um, but when I'm watching from the outside, that's what I see. I agree. I mean, yeah. again, his play design is really top notch. When he is in his bag and he has the quarterback under center and all those shifts and motions, he can get guys wide open. He can create huge holes. That stuff puts defenses in tons of conflict. He talks about it. It's true. Uh, but he gets away from that stuff with the season on the line consistently. And you talked about it. Like, second half, Super Bowl, winning. What do you do? Pass. Drop back pass. Drop back pass. Drop back pass. Like, dude, you are a run play action guy. What are you doing? He does it consistently, man. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Right. I don't know. With like, the if best. someone who didn't know football asked you, hey, Ryan, how come Kyle Shanahan hasn't won a Super Bowl yet? You would have to explain that it's largely his fault. Yeah. yeah. Crunch time. Crunch uh -huh. time. Yeah. Um, Dave says, are we getting another kicker? I think he was referring to our Jack Bates. Uh, Grant was laying out the case of why they need to bring in a kicker for competition in training camp. Yeah. They should. They brought one in last year. It's not like Jake Moody was good. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I think the problem with Jake is that he seemed like a head case. Like he has talent, but when the pressure was on, he fell apart. Maybe year two will be better for him. Maybe he'll be more relaxed and calm. But you have to have a plan better than hopefully maybe he could, you know, like you have to hedge, I think. Yeah. Better be safe than sorry. Matt McCown yeah. says we have a kicker who can make 60 yards plus field goals. We need it's one true. that can hit less than that 30. True. Zane could 60. do that. <laughs> Zane. 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 USFL. Yeah. So they combine. The XFL is now the USFL, I believe. Oh. That's yeah. They, com they combine with. Uh, some other yeah i like that there's a spring football league there should be a spring football league and it should get more it should be on the nfl network they should be playing that stuff i would watch it would you not watch football right now if it was on and there were like actual young players like young quarterbacks playing bryce young sam howell that would be good for ball i'll, I'll i'd watch it if, as I'd long as the it. warriors aren't as long as the warriors aren't playing i'd, I'd watch rather it. watch spring football than college football How about that? Maybe college football hot take sucks. Wow, the games aren't close. They're all professional athletes now, not amateurs, but they're not nearly the best professional athletes in the world. The sport sucks. Todd they need to make they need to change their offenses to be more like the NFL to yep. prepare these kids to play in yep. the NFL. Yeah, and, and it'd probably be more entertaining at that point as well. Yeah. Um, Dave Barkley says, because Kyle sucks. Fire Kyle. Uh, Brother Trade Boss him. says, yes, Kyle Levy is the Achilles. It's so clear. Uh, Michael 
lot speak. Hopefully I'm saying this right. Says round one pick since 2017, three offense, four defense, pretty even. Wait, seven. That's seven picks. Round one picks in 2017, three offense. Hold on. Are you are you concluding all the ones they spent on Trey? All the because... Trey Lance picks. It was McGlinchey <laughs> and Trey. It... No, Ayuk. Okay. Ayuk too. Ayuk too. Okay. That's true. But again, Ayuk was replacing Emmanuel Sanders. Like they needed a starter. McGlinchey was replacing Trent Brown. They needed an immediate starter, and Trey Lance was going to replace Jimmy Garoppolo eventually. There's they're not in that position on offense right now. I mean, they could take. No, they're just not. They're not. Any offensive player other than a quarterback they would draft in round one would be drafted to start day one, I think. And they don't have, they're not in that position. So defense it is. Michael. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise me. Um, David Barkley says, Kyle will never admit where he falls short ever. No, it's not really who he is. Anthony says, Kyle's biggest flaw as a coach is situational football in big games. Every DBS Super Bowl loss. He stopped running the ball. Accountability, he does not. Yeah, that's, accountability yeah. is not his strength. And then Dave says this was his year, and he still gave it away. It does feel like this is his best chance that he's going to have for a long ass time. Yeah. All right, uh, you still got time, brother? We got a couple more subjects, and we've been going an hour and Let's six minutes. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Let's do it. What sophomore player will make the Hufanga leap? I call it the Hufanga leap because a lot of people were down on Hufanga, um, and I. I really thought he was going to do good, and he all pro. What sophomore on the 49ers this year has a chance or is most likely to make a similar jump in play like Hufunga did in year two? Okay. I'm not going to go with Jair Brown because his stock is way up. Everyone expects big yeah. things from Jair Brown. He's a very good yep. player. Okay, so let's go through it. Guy who uh, uh, disappointed last year and might be able to become a, I don't know, Hufunga was an all-pro in his second year. So Jake Moody? No. Sorry. Cameron Latu? No. Not betting on Cameron Latu. Darrell Luter Jr. Possibly. That's a possible one. Uh, the latest round five corner. He's got a spot to be in the nickel defense. He really redshirted last year. Um, possible. Robert mm -hmm. Beal. Doubt it. Uh, D. Yeah. Winters. That's a possibility. Him. Yeah. Braden Willis. That might be he's possible. Got chance than, he's got a better chance than a lot, too. Ronnie might Bell, I actually kind of like as a slot receiver, but I don't think he's going to get a chance until ne the season after next. And then Jalen Graham. Maybe one of those two linebackers, one of those two linebackers, or Luter. Darrell Luter. I should, I should stop. I should pick one now, huh? Yeah. Okay. Pressure's on. This is on wax. We're putting it Winters. on wax. Winters. 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 Okay. Winters. Why winters? winters. Because I think he's got that body type. He's fast. I think he's a weak side linebacker. I think he'll be better than Devondre Campbell. I think he didn't quite have an NFL body type last year. He looked like a rookie out there. But um, it's year two. He comes back in great shape like a lot of year two players do. I think he could be exactly what the Niners are looking for. They know what they're looking for at, at uh, linebacker. And I always thought Winters was like the Dre Greenlaw clone. A little bit shorter. Fast sideline to sideline. Jalen Graham, a little bit more like um, a middle linebacker to me. A little bit taller, not quite as rangy. I don't know. Winners. I think uh, winners is a good pick. If the 49ers actually use their tight ends, I could see Braden Willis because they have a need there, and he's pretty much backup tight end at this but point. I mean, he's more like a dwelly type than a Warner type. Like, he's not a blocking tight end. He's more of like a receiving yeah. specialist. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so it 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 could be him. Jair Brown is the obvious pick. I think he's going to have a hell of a year. Um, I I don't know. I'm going to go with Luter, man. The real Luter Jr. Yeah. It, the reason I'm going to go with Luter is because I feel like the 49ers still have a need. They did pick up. Uh, forget that guy's name from the Saints. Uh, Yedem, Yedem, who I think is going to be really good. But outside of that, they don't really have anything at DB. I'm sure they're going to draft a guy uh, this year. But I think Luter might get some opportunity. And so I'm going to go with him. But if I'm being real, I don't think 
any of these guys are going to make the Hufunga leap to go from where Hufunga was to all pro. I don't see any of these guys really making that huge Hufunga leap, but I think Luter can get involved in this this team a little yeah. bit. And the thing about Hufunga, like he was controversial his rookie year, but he did play a fair like they were they kept trying to get him on the f- field. You could tell that they liked him. So that wasn't Winters. That the really which player fits that description? Bell. Obviously, Jair Brown, 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 Bell, Bell. and uh, Willis. Frankly. Willis was getting yeah. playing time. He was on the yeah. field in overtime on offense. So maybe the fact that they lost out on Brock Wright and Cameron Latsu looks like a bust. Maybe Willis will end up being their number two tight end by default. The only way that he really like makes that Hufunga leap, though, in this offense, it's is if he gets some, the ball. Kittle gets, if Kittle Kittle gets isn't going to happen. Yeah, if Kittle yeah. something happens to Kittle, knock on wood, and he gets an opportunity to be the tight end one. Yeah. So. It's going to be interesting. I'm not sure if there's anybody that's going to make that Hufanga leap, to be real. Jake right. Moody, man, all pro season on deck. <laughs> you never know. You never right. know. Here's the last question of the day for you, sir. Uh, contract gear loading for a few guys. Who balls out, man, gets the bag? We've seen guys absolutely ball out in the Niners when it's time to get paid. Ayuk last year, Debo a couple of years before that. Uh, Eric Armstead, when they made him play out his fifth year option, I've never seen Eric Armstead play better. That that was the best he's ever played. He should be he should only sign one year contracts. I'm gonna go with Jawan Jennings. He's gonna be an unrestricted free agent next year. And the more the Niners give him the ball, the better of a comp pick they'll get when he leaves. Right? Yeah. So he really took over the Super Bowl. I felt like that was his coming out moment. Kyle really, when the pressure was on, he trusted Jennings, not just to catch, but to throw. He had two touchdowns in that game. One throwing, one catching. That was an incredible performance. Clearly, he needs more opportunities. They were going to cut Kyle Juszczyk until he took a a pay cut. So, to me, this is the Jawan Jennings year. I think they're going to play three wide receivers a lot more. He's going to get more targets, and he's going to get a nice payday from some other team in a year. Jennings. I think that's a good one. I think the obvious one for the 49ers is Brock Purdy, but I'm not going to go that route because it's too easy. For sure. Um, so the one I'm going to go with is uh, Diamador Lenore. He, I like that. He, he, he's in a contract year. I think this year he's he's younger than Ward. I think he shows that he's just as good as Ward this year. Yeah. I think he shows that. He's, he's a better hitter. And uh, I think Diamador Lenore is going to ball out and get paid. I'm I'm surprised the 49ers haven't extended him up until this point. I, I, I that was something I expected him because I, I think the longer you wait, if you give Diamond or Lenore a full season, he only gave it one touchdown all year last year. If he has a similar season as he did last year, he's gonna get paid a lot of money by some team. And I, I don't know if it's gonna be the 49ers. It kind of reminds me of Emmanuel Mosley. Emmanuel Mosley was very similar to uh mm-hmm. Diamond or Lenore. Um, hell of a player, tough. Good tackler, great number two corner. And the Niners never really gave him that extension, and then he left. Um, I don't think the Niners make big investments in their de- in their defensive backfield. They have like one highly paid guy there at a time, and it's usually their number one corner. Are they going to pay a lot of money in their number two? I don't see it. I think Lenore's going to have that season, like you said, and then, like Jennings, go get paid elsewhere. There's another guy, too, and I think you touched on it. Aaron Banks. Aaron Banks. Yeah, he could Aaron get, Banks. If he, if he continues to improve, it seems like he improves every year. And if he improves again this year, he's going to get, get paid $20 million dollars next year. Yeah. He yeah, could. That's another guy. That's another, another one. Guy. And like, you don't really think of guards like having an incredible contract year because like, what are they going to do? Like, just pancake every single person they face on every play. Uh, you can see the production with wide receivers, but that's a good call. Yeah. I think Aaron mm-hmm. Banks could be the answer. All right. Uh, yeah. Some that's man. Dave Barclay says this. Uh, we we already read that sad one. That meant, that one made me sad. Dave. Matt says most upsetting comment all offseason. Kyle saying he is happy with our O line. Here comes D line at thirty one. You you listen to Kyle talk about offensive line. You listen to Jim Harbaugh talk about offensive line. There's a difference in what they're looking for. With Kyle, he always makes excuses like, "Well, it didn't cost us the game. It wasn't the reason we lost. It's good enough." It's all he's really looking for. Harbaugh wants a dominant offensive line. Remember that offensive line he had 11, 12 years ago? It wasn't just Staley and Yapati on the left. It was also Boone and Anthony Davis on the right. Jonathan Goodwin was an excellent center. Like, no weak links on that. 
a five man unit. Kyle's like, well, just give me two guys, we'll work it out. I was upset last year they didn't get Dewan Jones. That's who I was asking for. He ended up being a stud on the Cleveland Browns. I think they're going to draft like two offensive linemen this year, but I don't think it's going to be as high as where I would want them to draft them. It'll be some guys, some some system type dudes that they see that he can fit our system really well right. after two years of sitting on the bench. That's kind of who they'll probably get, unfortunately. Yeah. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Well, maybe they'll get another guard in round two to replace Banks eventually, and then they'll take like a – an offensive tackle in round five because that's where they got Colton McKivitz. So just run it back. Run it back. Anytime you can get another Colton McKivitz, you've got to do that. <laughs> they will. They'll get another Colton. Yeah. Yeah. They'll run it back. All right, guys. That's the show. Make sure you like this channel or excuse me, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and turn on notifications as well as for Grant. Obviously, I'm sure all you guys are. We had a lot of people watching, Grant. 1,123 people. You gotta 1100 love that. are watching from your channel 23 on mine probably that's my guess <laughs> <laughs> you got all the super chats today man so this was a great show it's nice to have people tuning in on uh, a random monday in april we had a lot to talk about though it was a good show i hope we delivered i think i think we delivered make sure you yeah. watch the solar clips but only if you have the proper eyewear starts yeah. at 10 15 starts right now the peak is at 11 15 if you're in northern california so ryan's such a dad he's looking out for you Use the proper eyewear. Use the proper eyewear, please. I don't give a fuck what you do. <laughs> Not my problem. <laughs> Where the fuck you want? I Look don't care. It. Don't blame Stare me. At it. You're an adult. Was, I assume. Which president was staring at the sun? Who was that? Was that George Bush? Probably. They're like, don't stare at this. There's an eclipse. They're like, don't stare at the sun. He just he went for it. Yeah, it sounds like something he would do. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. All right, you guys. Anyway. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, Grant. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you so much for watching the Ryan G. Hensley Show. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. The Ryan G. Hensley Show is brought to you by Hensley Real Estate and Mortgage. I've been operating my real estate business in the state of California since 2009, and I would love to help your family. We are also sponsored by Hensley Solar. I can put solar on your house in up to 38 states. Underdog Fantasy is a sponsor of the channel. Please check out the details in the description to see how you can join Underdog Fantasy and get $100 matched in your initial deposit. And finally, I want to give a shout out to my sponsor, Blue Water Credit. They are the best credit repair company I've ever dealt with. If you want to fix your credit, reach out to Blue Water Credit. Details in the description for all of my sponsors. Again, thanks so much for watching. Hit that like button.